here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a short intimate sharing of mine on concept of predatory publishing versus the method of evaluation of the predatory list. Okay. What is predatory publishing? When a journal publisher willfully violates the standards of responsible scientific publishing for the purpose of receiving high publication fees at a short time, then we have a problem of predatory publishing. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two defining characteristics of predatory publishers. One is lack of transparency and intention to deceive. What is meant by lack of transparency? The website does not list down real business address. The fees are not posted to the public. And then as a writer, you will only know that you are being charged exorbitant fees and there is no way to get out from there, but to pay. There is no peer review. There is quick publication among others. That's lack of transparency. What about intention to deceive? The publisher claims to have impact factor for the journal, but the metrics are bogus. There is a claim to be double blind review, reviewed when actually it is not. The editorial board members do not even know they are listed or they do not function as editorial board. Much worse, they are not qualified. So the idea of Jeffrey Bill on predatory publishing is good. I was one of the supporters for this movement in 2013. He was even my peer reviewer for one of the articles on predatory publishing. We communicated via email. I invited him to give a talk and he agreed, but on the last minute he tried to back out because I was the first person in the Philippines to organize a conference on predatory publishing and academic journals. It was attended by researchers across the country, and the main speakers were actually Isagani Cruz, Dr. Isagani Cruz, Dr. Roberto Padua, okay, among the others. Now, why, why is the concept very good? Because indeed, it is true, there are predatory publishers who are not responsible or only after the money, and they pollute the academic environment. They should be stopped to protect academic integrity of the scientific community. And I joined Jeffrey Bill in that movement. Okay. The issues in the Bill's list centers on inadequate methods which do not follow the rigors of evaluation research. Because for evaluation to be valid, there has got to be informed consent of the publishers that they are being assessed. And there is no research tool upon which the conduct of the assessment is made. So there has got to be a tool that people will um, fill up so that we have data. There is no evidence that he has that. The results are never communicated to the publishers and the public, and the publishers have no involvement in the collection of data, such as submission of quality assurance documents to declare their journal management practices. So therefore, uh, Jeffrey Bill made a very good conception of what it takes to become a predatory publisher. He has all the parameters. And the parameters are well understood by him. He listed that down in his um, blog, but he has not gone to the level of putting them together into scientific rigor. So his criteria are in his head, definitely yes. But are his criteria in the instrument to evaluate? There is no evidence for that. In short, Bill's list is only a list and nothing more. In fact, one of my, should I call, the, um, marks, distinguishing marks for people who do not know research is their belief in the list, okay? So what about Jeffrey Bill's method? 
among all the listeners who are here today, I am I I want to tell you that every week he publishes his blog from scholarlyyowa.com, and I was able to track down all of the comments. So the progression of his uh, blog for since 2011 until 2014 when he stopped publishing his his um, blog why did he stop because um, he was able to commit what we call as libelous um, writings because um, why libelous because he needs to prove in court that he had solid evidence to back up his claim that a journal is predatory and therefore should not be patronized by the global community of scholars. So and he could not produce because he did not really have good methods to speak of. He did not have the evidence. So sort of in order to dissipate the case, he had to um, agree to take down his um, blog. That is why he stopped. And he was no longer accessible. He could not anymore comment. He could not anymore um, give speeches on predatory publishing. In short, he was grounded to a halt. Okay. I, I, I think that it's a very sad state because in the first place, he had a very good idea to speak of. Now, why can't he not develop very good methods? In the first place, he's not a researcher, not a scientist. He is a librarian. He wrote a lot about predatory publishing from his point of view. But then again, a good idea is not enough unless you have very good science to back it up. All right. So there is no screening like um, ev evidence that a complainer has published in the journal. And to send that complaint to the journal for answers by the managing editor. You see, in his blog, people would um, report to him that um, they have heard that this journal is not doing well and that it is. Um, an, uh, it fits the description of um, predatory publishing, which is coined by, by Jeffrey Bill. But then again, there is no opportunity on the side of Jeffrey Bill to validate whether this person is a victim. Because unless you are a victim of such journals, you would not really know if a journal is predatory. Because when we speak of quality of journal publication, we are talking here about internal dynamics. For example, um, peer review. There is no journal in the world that publishes the results of peer review. No, because that is internal to the journal. So the, the quality merits of a paper usually are not um, known to the public. They are, they are within the purview of um, privacy okay, of the journal. So if the only means to validate whether um, a journal is predatory based on the website, then definitely that is not right. That, is, that will never hold water in court. So he goes to the website of the aforementioned journal being complained upon and decides right then and there to add a title to his list. The longer the list, the better he feels about his work. Okay. Bial has no other people to help him do a valid evaluation. He claims a committee exists, but no such committee members came forward to confirm. And that is the sad part about it. Now, I will stop sharing because um, I'd like to continue um, orally to you so that I can explain very well what I want to happen next. I do not want to denigrate the contribution of um, Dr. Uh, of Mr. Jeffrey Bill on the matter of predatory publishing because he's maganda talaga ang idea niya. So since the predatory list is not a scientifically valid list, here is what you can do as researchers and students to avoid potentially predatory journals without using the Bill's list. One is check on the journal's metrics. What, what does this mean? You just go to Google, search the title of the journal that you want to publish your paper into, and then uh, you go to Google Scholar Metrics and then you check the H5 index. So you just type in the title of the journal in Google Scholar Metrics. There's a search box there. And then you are going to know whether it is found there. If it is not found there, uh, uh, the, the journal does not contain any single article with five or more citations to at least one article. 
All right. And then check whether the title of the journal is Ensaimago of Scopus. Because in Saimago, there is always data on the metrics of the journal, the impact factor in the last two years. And then you can also check the journal title on the journal citation reports of Clarivate Analytics. Second, author metrics. Search the name of the author in Scopus author database and Google Scholar citations. You can also search the name of the author in publish or perish by herzing.com. Because the list of publications and the age index of the author will reveal the quality of the writer. The third one that you are going to check is article metrics. How many citations the article got as indicated in the Google Scholar? The more citations, the more credible is the reference source. Indexing company, that's the number four. What are the global distribution channels of this journal? Is it part of BrookWest, Ames Co-host? Uh, for example, Syngids Gale, Claribate Analytics, um, Scopus Elsevier? Because these companies actually provide for what we call um, content selection board, an independent body of scientists that they hire in order to pass a judgment on the merits of a proposed journal to be included. And when the journal passes the scrutiny of the journal um, content selection board, then they would recommend its inclusion. All right, so that's the one. So what can the journals do on their end in order to avoid being labeled as predatory? So I would like to make a suggestion here, suggestions rather. One, there is a need to include a policy for non-predatory practices in the editorial policy. So I created this. I think I'm the first one in the world to do that. There is a paragraph in the editorial policy of the journals I manage and the journals that I am a consultant to include non-predatory practices. Essentially, um, lifting from Jeffrey Bill what he conceived to be characteristics of predatory publishing so that the journal itself has a declaration that it will not become one predatory publisher. Second, translate the predatory publishing concept into a survey questionnaire with corresponding Cronbach Alpha, exploratory factor analysis, and confirmatory factor analysis to make sure the questionnaire is robust and reliable. So I did that. I created a questionnaire and uh, I used the questionnaire to analyze and to investigate my own journals. And indeed, there were practices there that uh, were identified as by Jeffrey Bill to be not sound. And so we, we implemented the measures in order that we could correct them. And that's a good part of his idea, okay? So you don't want to fall victim to potentially predatory uh, journals. You can do the following. One, you can write the managing editor if they can release to you, because you are the client, the three copies of the peer review reports as proof of review. If they, if they will not tell you that they can release the peer review results, then do not go into that journal. Don't submit your article. Because for all we know, they do not really have a peer review. Second, ask how much is the fee prior to proceeding to publish. If they will not tell you and they will tell you that we will only tell you after um, you pass the, um, the standards of the journal, and then uh, we will tell you how much you're going to pay, then do not believe in that. Because while most journals charge only $300, they will charge you as much as $2,000 or $1,500. That's too much to ask for a journal without Q1 or Q2 quartile of um, Scopus. And then third, ask for the cycle time. Avoid journals that promise you fast publication. Get away from journals that are like that because there are no shortcuts to quality. Number four, search in Google the title of the journal. Uh, uh, search in Google the title of you um, the title of the journal plus complaints. Okay, journal title you you type in plus uh, delisted from Scopus. Because if that journal has been delisted by Scopus, it means that per annual evaluation, that did not, that did not measure up in terms of current standards of Scopus. That's the point there. Okay, all right. So 
on the whole, what is my take on this on a personal level is that um, the idea of predatory publishing is correct. I have no question on that. The methodology of the BLS list is not sound and therefore is not valid. So no person of right, integrity, character, and research competence should believe on the GFAB list. But rather, because we, we know that that predatory publishing exists, we have to be careful regarding one, um, the selection of our references, that our references should be written by authors who are well cited in the field and recognized scholars, and that the article that we are citing has been cited several times, and that the journal that published the article has been um, cited very well by other scholars and is indexed in international um, uh, in international bodies, okay, with good reputation. And so, right then and there, you know that you anchor the the empirical evidences of your research based on sound references. And then finally, so that you will not fall into the tender trap of the predatory publishers, you just go to um, Google and then you search for top journals in, and then you type in your particular field, for example, top journals in qualitative research. And then um, Google will give you a list of those top journals that you can validate. And then you click the link and then you go to the website. And then you look at their editorial policy, samples of their current issues, then you would really know whether the journal has rigor and integrity and good character. That's just what you are going to do. Okay, all right. So if you have questions, um, you can raise them, but probably I would be able to answer you in the peer because right now I am going to take the boat en route um, to Tagbilaran City for my team. I have a team of nine and we are going there. And thank you very much, um, Dr. Ava Claire Robles for the warm and gracious invitation to uh, give you my sense worth of, you know, um, first-hand knowledge about predatory publishing. I like this topic because I really am um, able to know about this on a first-hand basis. Thank you and a pleasant um, good evening to all of you.